shall prosper. Yes, no Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Praise His name. Amen. We praise His name. We glorify His name. He's worthy. Oh, He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Amen. No weapon. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. 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 Greetings and God bless you. Uh, welcome to our teleconference tonight and we want to join and thank God for a song from Fred Hammond who's saying no weapon form against me shall prosper hallelujah and it won't work it won't work and as children of God say no weapon to form against us shall prosper because God said so you know he said in his word and we have to stand on the word of God so with this we fear not we doubt not we just abide in Him. Praise the Lord. He says, um, He promised that He will be with us until the end of the world. End of the world. He promised to be with us. Praise the name of God. So welcome. God bless you. As we go into a teleconference tonight, I just want to have a short prayer and then I go into the Word of God. Glad to have all of who is joining us and those who are yet to join us. God bless you. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. We bless your holy name. Thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies. Pray you bless us. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for your protection and all your provision to us, Lord God. We give you praise. We give you glory. All the praise and the glory belong unto you. And we worship you and we praise you and we glorify you because you deserve it. Hallelujah. Bless us and make us a blessing. And keep us by your grace and by your mercy. We ask these blessings in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that whatever we do in word or in deed, we must do it in the name of Jesus. There's no greater name. There's no other name. No matter what we may use, what a name we will use, there's only one name that we recognize as our Lord and our Savior and our Deliverer, our Provider, our everything, our El Shaddai, our uh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah Tinkish, and all those names that Jesus has. Is You know, He is Lord above all. And we just thank God that, you know, we are here to recognize the great wonders and the great power and the mercy and the grace in our Lord Jesus. And we have to love Him. We have to love him because he's good, he's great, he's wonderful. He's a superhero, above superhero. You know, there's no word to describe God or Jesus. There's no word to describe him. We couldn't use any English word to describe him because the English word is not, is not big enough. In the color, you know, there's no word in English to describe how great God is because his goodness is unsearchable. His greatness is, on, you know, is beyond our human man imagination. His power is beyond our, our very thought. We can't think and comprehend the power of God. So, but we thank God that you know, even though He's so great, He's so powerful, and He's so mighty, and you know, in all things, seeing all things, doing all things in us and out in in us and within us and in the whole universe, He's, he's everywhere. Even though he's so great, but yet he looked down upon us and he has time. He's, he's always had time for us. This is how wonderful he is. Whenever we call upon the name of the Lord, he hears us. He's never too busy. There was some we sing, um, reach out and touch the Lord. He's never too busy to hear your heart's cry. He, he is never too busy. To hear us, and that's wonderful. That is great. That that is awesome. So we just want to talk about Jesus tonight, about who He is and what He is, what He means to us, and for us to understand the Lord Jesus more. You know, nobody. We can't get to the depth of how great He is. We can't get to the height 
of his wisdom and his understanding. We, can, we, can't, we can't reach there. There's no way we can because he's ever expanding his, you know, the universe from beginning to end. He is he's all in all. So I'm just going to read some scripture here and then, you know, give a few words on this scripture. Uh, the first one is taken from St. John chapter 10. St. John chapter 10. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 11. St. John chapter 10 and verse 1 to 11. There is only one way to go into God. There's only one way to get into heaven. There's no two ways. There is only one pathway and there's only one door to go in. And there's only one man who can who, who who is the way he is the way he is the door he's everything so basically when we think about it when we have jesus we need nothing more when we have jesus when we love jesus when you know when we honor jesus when we serve him we need nothing more then that's why jesus said in his word Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all other things will be added unto you. Sometimes we look in here, we look into north, we look into south, we look into man, we look into everywhere we can look, and we're not looking in the right place. For everything we want is in Jesus. He's the provider. He's the deliverer. He's the healer. He is He's just everything. So I'm going to read up. St. John chapter 10. I'm going to read it's about the Good Shepherd. Um, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that cometh not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that enter in the door of the sheep shepherd is a shepherd of the sheep. He that entered by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, hallelujah, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of a stranger. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. And Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep, Hallelujah. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. I am the sheep. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, my... Uh, someone's just joined us. God bless you. Um, we're reading from St. John chapter 10, a few verse down. And so verily, Jesus says, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, he that entered not by the door of the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is the thief and a robber. So when we look at these words of Jesus, it's, it's telling us that we should actually keep our eyes on him and him alone. Because many 
um, shepherds will come and say they come in the name of Jesus. And many are false prophets will lead the sheep astray. So Jesus is making sure that we realize that he is the shepherd. He's a good shepherd. And he entered by the door. You know, if a man have a business, he can come in quite clearly by the door because that's his business. He has the keys. He has, you know, he knows where everything is. Someone who don't know will might try to come in some other way. But Jesus is telling us clearly that he is the shepherd of the sheep. And he's the good shepherd. And when he comes, he comes through the door. Because he knows his sheep, he knows his pasture, everything belonging to him. But a thief will come some other way and find some other way. So... He's making this clear to us that he is the way and he alone. And whatever we do, our eyes must be fixed upon him, our good shepherd. He said that, but he that entered by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Jesus is God. He is everything. He, he, he knows everything. He knows everything. All of us, he, we are the sheep of his pastor. As the psalmist says, we are the sheep of his pastor. He knows us. He, 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 oh, he calls us by name. Our relationship with God, with Jesus, is a very personal relationship. He has a very personal relationship with us. And he, we are the apple of his eyes. As long as we serve him, obey him, live in his word, serve him in spirit and in truth. We are the apple of his eyes. He cares for us. He provides for us. He opens up doors for us because he's able. So the, the, but he that enter it by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So Jesus comes through the door when our heart is open, Jesus said, be, he, he, was, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. The door of our heart. Jesus stands at the door of our heart and knock. And if we open our heart unto him, he says, he says I will come in. Isn't that wonderful? The great God, the great almighty God, the great God, the mighty God. Someone like says, the mighty God is Jesus. The mighty God is knocking on our heart's door. He's knocking on the door of every man. And if a man opens his heart door, Jesus said, I will come in. But Jesus is not going to break the door down. That's what thieves and robbers do. They will break the door down or they will try to come through the window or some other way. But Jesus, don't do that. He said, I stand at the door and I knock. And any man open unto me, I will come in and I will sup with him. What a wonderful invitation. You, we wouldn't get that from the royal family. You get it from, you know, King Charles or nobody like that. He ain't going to be knocking on our door. But the great God, the one and only the Almighty, he says, I enter through the door and the porter open and the sheep hear his voice and he calleth his own sheep by name and lead them out. Praise God. Jesus is a good shepherd. He went on to say in verse 4, when he put it forth, when he put it forth his own sheep, he's going before them it go before them. He put it out his sheep, his own sheep. He go before them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. When we, when we know Jesus, we just need to follow him. That's all we need to do, follow him. He will lead us into David said, the Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down 
in green pastures. That's the kind of shepherd Jesus is. He maketh me and you to lie down in green pastures. He opened doors for us. He blessed us. And sometimes he blesses us more than we can contain the blessing. Sometimes God wants to bless us, but we cannot contain the blessing. He put it out his own feet, sheep. He go before them and the sheep follow him. When we know Jesus, when we understand Jesus, we can't do nothing but follow him. Because he's going to lead us in green pastures. We will be fed. We'll be nourished. We'll be provided for. That's the kind of shepherd he is. He loves his sheep. He said they put them forth and the sheep follow him. We should follow Jesus. We don't need to follow no one else. Just follow Jesus. We don't need to follow the pastor, the who serve a minister, whatever. Just follow Jesus. And Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. There are those who will go before us, but make sure that they are following Jesus. Make sure they are following Christ before we follow them. Follow me as I follow Christ. I want to follow Christ. We should all want to follow Christ. For he knoweth his voice. The sheep know the voice. We know the voice of Jesus. The, joy, the voice of Jesus speak of love, peace, joy, unspeakable, full of glory. The, the, joy, the voice of Jesus speak grace to our hearts, speak of mercy, speak of forgiveness and all the good fruits of the Spirit. That is the voice of Jesus. A stranger voice they will not follow, but will flee from them. From him, for they know not his voice. You know, we know we are to know the voice of Jesus. One songwriter clearly says, "When I reach the crystal sea, voices will call." And you know, every day we are approaching the crystal sea. It says, "Voices will call, voices." And even now, on our earthly journey, there are voices calling us. There are voices calling us. Come this way, come that way. But let us keep our eyes on Jesus. Let us keep our eyes on Jesus. The stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him. For he know, for they know not the voice of a stranger. We are to know the voice of Jesus and to follow Jesus. He went on to say, This parable Jesus spake unto them. But they understood not the things that they were, he spake of them. Then Jesus said unto them again, and this is um, St. John chapter 10 verse 7. Then Jesus said unto them again, I say, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. So Jesus is not only the shepherd, but he's the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. And today if we look at what's going on, we have to be careful how we, how we serve God. Because if we are looking to men for light, sometimes their light becomes darkness. We are to make sure that we look to Jesus. Because the Bible tells us clearly that the devil himself can transform himself into an angel of light. So we have to be so careful what we, what we hear and what word we receive and accept. And some other things that are going on today is just perverse, perversive of the word of God. It just perverse the word of God. It is against the word of God. It is making the word of God non effect. And many are the leaders of the churches who are misleading the congregation regarding the word of God. I think someone told that the Pope, the Pope want to rewrite the Bible. The thing, things like that. The Pope want to rewrite certain aspects of the Bible. I think it was the Lord's Prayer someone was saying to me. 
that aspect is totally d demonic, satanic, or whatever. The Bible says, if any man had one word, and look how, look how, look how, look how transistent the word is, look how clear the word is to us. It says in the Revelation, John got the revelation, Jesus said, if any man add a word, add anything to his word, to the word of Jesus, to the word of God, the plagues, there are some plagues coming upon this earth. The Bible tells us there are some plagues. We think that uh, coronavirus was anything. There are greater plagues coming upon this earth. Greater plagues. Coronavirus was nothing to compare with what is yet to come. But if any man add anything to the word of God, this is why when I minister, I use the word of God to the fullness. Because I don't believe in adding to the word of God. I don't believe in taking away. But the Bible says, if any man add anything to the word, the plagues that are to come upon this earth will be added to them. And if any man take anything out of the word, then the, you know, their name shall be taken out of the Lamb's Book of Life. So we have to be so careful when we're handling the word of God. We have to be so precise. We have to just tell it as it is. That's what God called us to do. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the door of the sheep also. And all that ever come before me were thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. So many people are professing to follow in Jesus. But they are not following him according to his word. And we have to be careful. When Jesus was up on the mountain, he told them about what is to come. He said, be sure that you not be deceived because many shall come in my name saying that I am Christ and shall deceive many. So there's many false prophecy that should arise in the last days and we are now in the last days. So we have to know the word of God. We have to follow the word of God. We have to live in the word of God. And Jesus repeat again in same um, John chapter 10 verse 9, I am the door. Now, to, for, to get into any building, you want to get into any building honestly, in the right way, the only right way to get into any building is through the door. The, if you go some other way, if you try to go through some back way, you can't be trying to go there the right way. You're going there the wrong way. And by going there the wrong way, you're gonna, you're not gonna get in. You're just not gonna get in. The only way we can get into the kingdom is through the door. The only way we're gonna receive salvation and enter into the pearly gates is through the door. And Jesus says, I am the door. And by me, if any man, by me, if any man enter in. He shall be saved. So the only, the, the only way we can be saved is through Jesus. And that's what the Bible teaches. There's no other way. I am the door. And by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pastures. I love that. I love that. You want to get in to get get go through the door, go through the proper channel. <laughs> you want to get into heaven, we want to get into heaven, go through the proper channel. We want to go through the pearly gates. We want to go where Abraham is, where Isaac is, where Elijah is, where all those great prophets are. Go through the door. Don't try to find some back way to go in. Go through the door. And Jesus says, I'm the door. Praise God. Then verse 10, John 10 verse 10, The thief cometh not, 
the thief come the only reason people will try to go in through some back way is to to steal to kill and to destroy and this is the nature of the devil that's all he wants to do the nature of the devil all he wants to do is to steal and to kill and to destroy so it behooves us to turn away and look to Jesus he says I am come Jesus says I am come that they might have life God want us to have life God don't want any the Bible says God is not concerning his promises he's not willing that any should perish God don't want any to perish that that is not the will of God that any man should go to hell not the will of God the, God is not slack concerning the promises not willing that any should perish but all should come to repentance to salvation God want all men to be saved you say God is a loving God I don't want anybody to to go to, and don't make, hell was not made for man hell was never made for man hell was made for the devil and his angels that's what God made hell for because they were doomed from they were cast out of heaven they were doomed for hell there was no coming back you see the difference between man and angels is that man has the ability to repent angels cannot repent so from God cast them out and God's archangel Michael Gabriel cast them out of heaven there was no coming back for them and the devil knows there's no coming back the devil cannot repent the fallen angels cannot repent and God made hell for them that's what God made hell for not for man but true disobedience, if we don't obey the word of God, if man don't obey the word of God, then they will end up with those fallen angels and the devil in hell. So it behooves all of us, all mankind, to be saved. And God has opened the door. He said, I am the door. See, I am the door. Come. He said, come unto me. All he that are heavy laden, burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What a wonderful thing. I don't understand how God is making so much promises to man and man is just not taking heed. Man is not looking to not turning to God. The more the word we read the word of God is the more man turn away from God. Nobody thinks about God these days, have you noticed? You can't you can't talk about God. Talk about everything immoral, and you know you have all the audience you have. Talk about goodness. Talk about mercy. Talk about grace. Talk about love, and the love of God. Man don't want to know, and you know Jesus told us clearly that um, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of man. It was like that in the days of Noah. Nowadays you preach, you preach, you preach. I see this man is preaching all over London. I think he's from America. I can't remember his name, but he goes into different parts of London preaching. And, you know, the people just walk in. No, nobody, nobody stopped to say, ask him or to say nothing. He just, but God bless him. He's preaching the word. He's telling a man to repent. You know, I, w I would have liked to have joined him and, you know, tell man, man must repent because without, without repentance, without repentance, repentance is so important. It is so essential. Without repentance, we can't come to God. We have, repentance is the way to God, to Jesus. The way to the door is to repent. And repent is just acknowledging that we were born in sin and so we are shaping iniquity and because of that we were destined for destruction, for hell. And Jesus came and died for us and his blood, his blood has ransomed, paid the ransom. We are ransomed by the blood of Jesus. 
Had Jesus not died, we would not have hope of eternal salvation. We would not have hope of our heavenly hope. Our hope of heaven would be gone. But because he came and he shed his blood, his innocent blood, his blood has cleansed us and make us whole. We are blessed beyond measure. We, can, we don't know the measure of our blessing. He says, the thief cometh not to, but to steal. The devil come only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He's destructive. He was destructive from, he was thrown out of heaven. He was destructive and he's destructive now. He says, I am come. Jesus says, I am come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. We may have life more abundantly. More life, more life, more hope, more joy, more peace, more understanding, more grace, more, more, more abundantly. That's why Jesus came. Because he wants us to have life and a more abundant life, a better life, a life of peace and joy. There's nothing in this world. When we think about it in the measure of things, there's nothing in this world. We are just surviving. That's not what God made us. This is not what God made for us. Man was not made to labor. You know, when God created Adam, he, he put him in the garden just to dress it. Adam didn't have to work. But because of sin, and because of sin and disobedience, man was cast out of the garden. And there wandered, wandered, and because of the mercy of God, because he loved man, because man was made in his image. So what is the image of man? What is the image of God? So when you see a man, that's the image of God. Because God made man in his image. In verse 11 it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. So Jesus knew when he came, when he came to earth that he was going to die. He was going to give up his life. That is the reason why Jesus came to give up his life as a sacrifice. Because in the old days they put goats and um, bullocks and, sh and all kinds of turtle dove, all sorts of things. They offered to God as a sacrifice for at oneness, for, for, you know, for peace. They offered different sacrifice to God on the altar. Many different types of like It's always blood sacrifice. Always blood. And they offered those sacrifices to God. But though, those sacrifices was only uh, for a short while. Of course, after a year, they have to more offer more sacrifice. They have to continually offer bullocks and different animals upon the altar to God. As a, you know, as a you know, peace offering. And so that was not, that could not, that, that would, could not suffice the sins of the world. No, no, no bullocks on the altar could, could suffice the sins, to satisfy for the sins of the world. So Jesus came and gave his blood as a sacrifice for, our, for the world. He was a spotless lamb. Spotless means less sinless. He had no sin. He was pure. He had no fault. He was righteous and pure and holy. And because of that, his blood was the only thing that could save us. And I, I, I think sometimes the devil blinds the eyes of men that they don't realize what God has done. Because I think if everyone understood what God did, for us, then I think I, a lot of people would come to the Lord. More people come to the Lord. But the Bible says the devil, the evil one has blinded their eyes and they haven't seen 
You know, one songwriter says, you know nothing until you know the love of God. And that's quite true. We know nothing until we know, understand the love of God. We know nothing. Only when we know the love of God, we begin to understand how great God is. His love is so, you know, it's a gappy love. His love is so so great, it's so mighty, it's so powerful, it is so deep, it is so high, it is so wide. We cannot comprehend that love. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. A good shepherd. But he that is a hireling, if you hire someone to look after your, your goods, they don't have that responsibility because it's, they, they, it don't belong to them. They're only paid to do a job and that they don't have that interest as the good shepherd knows his sheep and cares for his sheep. So God know us and care for us. The hireling is not the shepherd. You know, some people are not giving God what God deserves and they're serving half, half, half. You know, but we have to serve God in full. And that the hireling is not the shepherd whose sheep are not. So the hireling don't own the sheep. The good shepherd owns the sheep. And the hireling, now this is the hireling. The hireling sees the wolf coming. So <laughs> the hireling, you hire someone to look after your goods and look after your sheep. And you see the wolf is coming now. He knows that the wolf is going to take the sheep and devour the sheep. But the hyaline leave at the sheep and flee. And the wolf catches them and scatter the sheep. My God. Sometimes you wonder, you know, how it is, how, how it is, what it means to be a good shepherd. Sometimes you wonder how it is when you have to respond responsible for God's sheep and you're the shepherd sometimes you wonder how important it is that you know God give you a sh a sheep to, to, to look after and you scatter them sometimes you say you are you following the good shepherd or are you just like a hireling so the hireling see the wolf coming and hireling flee so he don't try to defend the, the sheep, but he run away and leave the sheep to the wolf. Because he's a hireling, he cared not for his sheep. Praise God that God loves us so much. Praise God that God, the Lord Jesus, is a good shepherd. He cared for his sheep. He would not see the wolf coming and leave his sheep. Hallelujah. And leave us. He would not leave us in the hand of the enemy. That great dragon. He would not do that. He would defend us. Because he's a good shepherd. He's not a hireling. Jesus is a good shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd. And I know my sheep. And I'm known of mine. I am the good shepherd. Praise God. What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful God. And in St. John chapter 14, coming down, in verse 6, St. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, He says, I am the way. Hallelujah. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Anyone, anyone, anyone who wants to uh, minimize, minimize the power of Jesus and the greatness of Jesus, they don't know God. You cannot minimize the power and the greatness of Jesus. He says, I am the way. If you're going from one place to another, you need to know the way. And if you don't know the way, you will get lost. It doesn't matter where you're going from south to north to south, east to west, and you're going from one point to the other. If you don't know the way, you will get lost. 
Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No man. He make it clear. So, you know, he says, if he had known me, he would have known the Father also. Henceforth, you have known him and have seen him. Oh, I love those words. I, I think they're so awesome. They're so powerful. Those words are so wonderful. And um, yeah, then, then John, in John chapter 11 and verse 25, um, I read John chapter 11, verse 25. It says, it says, uh, Jesus says to Martha, Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Hallelujah. I love those words. Believe thou this. Hallelujah. I love those words. I am. Jesus is the great I am. When he met Moses in the burning bush, and Moses says, Who shall I tell Pharaoh has sent me? He says, I am that I am. Hallelujah. No other one can say, I am that I am. I am. Jesus says, He says, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He that believeth on me, I am the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. Oh, what a promise. And all we have to do is just believe. Just believe. Believe on him. And when we believe on him, we will show him the honor. We will show him the, you know, we'll show him the love and the honor and the praises that is due to him. When we believe on him, when we truly believe on him, you know, we see nothing but Jesus. Nothing but Jesus. Because all we need is Jesus. All we need is Jesus. Hallelujah. He's so great. He's so wonderful. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus is all the world to me. Hallelujah. I worship, I praise, I glorify him. And I magnify his wonderful name. Glory be to God. We are coming down to the end. Um, there's just one more scripture I want to look at before. Um, um, our sister Rose to give us a, a little word before I close. And this is the word I'm looking at now. Um, Revelation chapter 22. Revelation 22 and verse 22 and verse 12 to 14. Hear what Jesus says. This is Jesus talking to John on the Isle of Patmos. Behold, I am coming soon. Hallelujah. Behold, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me to give to each one according to what he has done. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am coming soon. And we know he's coming soon. Look at what's going on around us. Jesus is coming soon. He says, my reward with me to give every man according to what he's done oh praise god we have to do something for jesus we have to do something for jesus because he's coming to he's coming soon and his reward is with him and he went on to say i am alpha and the omega i am the first and the last the beginning and the end Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and enter into the city by the gate. Hallelujah. Enter into the city by the gates. It's not door now, it's gates. Because with door, it's just one can go in at a time. But with gates, a multitude can go in. Enter by the gates. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right 
to the tree of life and enter the city by the gates. It's always just one way. You know, I, there's some ways it's a one-way God. It's a one-way God. Heaven is a one-way journey. Praise the name of the Lord. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Praise the name of the Lord. He is all. All we need, my brothers and sisters, is Jesus. All we need is Jesus. Praise his holy name. Praise the name of the Lord. Sister Rose, are you there? Give us a short testimony or word us and then we'll close. God bless. Always oh, see Pastor Winston there and ask. Invite Pastor Winston after you. So Sister Rose, you may sing a song or give us a word or something and then welcome us in their church and for the beautiful um, wedding anniversary gift as well we really felt the love and I just want to give God the thanks that me and my husband's been married for 12 years now and God has been good God has been good and I, I'm just grateful that it was my birthday last week as well and I've lived to see another year and God is just going to give you that peace that surpasses all understanding and yeah he's just worthy to be praised he's just wonderful he's amazing I mean, I don't know what I'd be like without him. And, you know, he's just so good. And I just ask you to continue to pray for me. Thanks for the prayers, actually, today. Pastor Winston as well. I, I wasn't feeling too good yesterday. We were supposed to go to a hotel for our wedding anniversary, but I, I had to cancel. I had to ring them back because I just wasn't feeling too good. My nose was clogging. My nose was running waters. A bit of a headache as well. So not being, you know, feeling too well this weekend. But God is good. God is good. And thanks for the prayers. I'm feeling a lot more refreshed than I did earlier on um, for all the prayers. Thank you all. God bless you all. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Sister Rose. God bless you. You're welcome. Keep, keep praising the Lord. Pastor Winston, I, I don't, but, but Adelian, I don't know if you want to say a few words. And, um, but Adelian is there, huh? Oh, then, Pastor Winston, then. Pastor Winston, you want to Okay, Delian's coming on. You want to say a few words, Delian, coming from um, Atlanta, Georgia, joining us from Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> oh, your reception is bad. I'm actually driving. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay. We let yeah. you go. Yeah, great word today. I really needed that word today. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, man. Drive safe. Drive safe, my son. God bless you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Amen. God bless you. Pastor Winston, you want to take over? Are you there, Pastor Winston? Otherwise, I'm going to close up. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Give thanks unto the Lord because the Lord is good and His mercy endured forever. Amen. So we thank God for everyone who's joined us and God bless you all. Keep you all by His grace. Um, God to have um, Pastor Winston there. Maybe he's not by his mutant. Um, my son Delian, P.T., God bless you, Sister P.T., and Sister Rosemary, God bless you. God bless you all. I'm just going to close a short prayer. God bless you, and then we close. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we bless your holy name. Bless everyone that is here on this teleconference. Lord, I pray you will be with us and keep us safe. Cover us under your blood, Lord. Help us to continue to give you praise and to give you glory that is due unto your name. We love you, Lord, because you are so good. We give you all the honor that is due to your name. Thank you for what you have done for us. Thank you for what you are doing for us. And thank you for what you have yet to do for us. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you, my brethren. God bless you and keep you. Cause your face to shine and have a wonderful week by the grace of God. Have a great week. Amen. God bless you all. Have a God, very blessed week. 
Have a blessed week, everyone. God Amen. bless you, PT and Delion, and everyone else. God bless you, Pastor Winston. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Get well, Auntie Rowan. God bless you. There are times when Amen. my own worship.